Now our next goal is to determine how the size of the sample affects the variability we will see in sample means. We assume that the population of individual babies on the previous pages this year has a mean birth weight of the same mean birth weight that it was in 2005, 3,500 grams, and a standard deviation of sigma equals 500 grams. We selected a random sample of babies to test our assumption about the population. We saw previously that for this population of babies, it was not surprising to see a random sample of nine babies with a mean birth weight of 3,400 grams. So a sample with a mean of 3,400 does not su suggest that the town's mean birth weight is less than 3,500 grams this year because there were only nine babies. But what if we increase the sample size? Will our conclusions change? That is, if the mean birth weight of 3,500 grams comes from a larger sample of babies, more than nine, does the sample provide stronger evidence that the town's mean birth weight is less than 3,500 grams? To investigate this question, we ran the simulation for different sample sizes, n equals nine like previously, larger n like 25 and 100. For each sample size, we collected 1,000 random samples of the sample size and recorded the sample means to generate the sampling distribution. So here you see the graph for n equals nine. Here you see it for n equals 25. And here we see it for n equals 100. We, we, when we compare the histograms of sample means, we notice the following. We'll scroll down here so we can look at the histograms and the, the comments. Okay, the center. The center is not affected by the sample size. The mean of the sample means is always approximately the same as the population mean, 3,500. So no matter how many babies you select in each sample, 9, 25, 100, you're doing this simulation a thousand times, which is a lot. So they all pretty much center around 3,500 because we're doing a lot of simulations here, 1,000. The spread, okay, the spread is smaller for larger sa samples. As you see for n equals 100, all the samples are pretty much between 3,300 and 3,700 or so. You see the very leftmost and the rightmost values, but they're a lot more spread out. For example, for n equals nine, they go as far as, as low as 3,000 and as high as 4,000, it looks like. And then somewhere in between for the n of 25. So the standard deviation of the sample means decreases as sample sizes increase. This is not surprising because we observed a similar trend with sample proportions. Now shape. The sampling distributions all appear approximately normal. This is not surprising because the dis distribution of birth weights in the population has a normal shape. Based on those hist histograms, it appears that sample size will change our conclusion about the population mean birth weight this year. Suppose our sample mean of 3,400 grams came from a random sample of 100 babies, like we saw on the very rightmost histogram. Means from samples this large did not vary much we mark the sample result in a histogram for samples of size 100 here. So imagine 3,400 was our mean on that one try, but this is, the histogram represents a thousand tries. Okay, let's scroll down a little and see what else we got. Okay, for n equals 100, a sample mean of 3,400 grams is an unlikely result. It gives fairly strong evidence that the population's mean birth weight is less than 3,500 grams. From advanced probability theory, we have a probability model for the sampling distribution of sample means. The model reinforces what we have already observed about the center and gives more precise information about the relationship between sample size and spread. The theoretical probability model for the sampling distribution of sample means. So suppose a, a population has a mean mu and a standard deviation of sigma. The distribution of all possible sample means from this population will have a mean mu, like we saw in those histograms above, no matter what n is, the sample size, the mean is always that certain thing that we saw. Let's see. And the standard deviation of, so the standard deviation will change because we saw the spread change as we increase the value of n. So mu doesn't change. It's just going to stay mu no matter how many simulations you do. But the standard deviation is not just sigma. It's going to be sigma divided by the square root of n because it depends largely on the sample size. And we'll see more about this on coming pages, but that's our formula.